Good evening. Good evening to you, sir. Can I help you, sir? Well, I hope so. My name's Scott Shelby. I'm a private detective. Uh, I'm investigating the case of the origami killer. I I'd like to ask you a few questions. My son is dead, Mr. Shelby. I have nothing more to say. You may know something that could help save other people's lives. I was unable to save the life of my own son. I do not see how I could save the lives of other people. I also lost someone I loved. I know what you're feeling. Then you will understand that I do not wish to talk about it. Oh, do you sell inhalers? I'm all out and at least I won't go away completely empty-handed. In the back of this door, to the right. Thanks. Good evening, sir. Are you looking for something in particular? Give me what you got in the register. Don't fucking try anything! Open the register, you dumb fuck! Put the money on the counter! Shit, are you deaf or what? Are you gonna open that fucking register or not? No, sir. You do not have the right to steal that money from me. I have worked very hard to earn it. You cannot have it. What did you say? You're out of your fucking mind, man! You don't get it, do you? I'm gonna put a fucking bullet right between your eyes if you don't do what I say now! You shall not be robbing my register, sir. That don't money is mine. Around. I ask you now to leave turn before around. it is too late. Christ! Goddamn idiot! Open the register! Hey, you! Come here! I said come here now! Don't move! Hands up! Put your fucking hands up or I'll shoot! Don't panic, let's just stay calm. Nobody here wants to hurt you. Uh, we're all just gonna be cool and everything will be all right. Yeah, yeah, I'm cool, man. Everything's gonna be all fucking right. My name's Scott. What about you? What's your name? Andrew. My name's Andrew. Do you have anyone you care for in your life? A, a girlfriend, maybe? A family? Yeah. A little girl. I got a little girl. Her name's Jessica. What would Jessica think if she saw you here? Ask yourself. What would happen to her if things go wrong? Look, it's not worth it. Put the gun down and just walk away. You giving me advice? I'll give you some fucking advice! Now, I want you to put the gun back in your pocket and quietly walk out of the store. My friend and I will forget about what just happened, and you'll have earned a second chance not to fuck up your life. What do you say? Thousand thank you, sir. I don't know what would have happened if you had not been here. Well, this I didn't come by for nothing. Have a nice day. When my boy, Razor, disappeared, I received a letter with a locker ticket inside. Inside the locker, I found this box. I do not understand what it means, but I think it must be a sort of message 
from the man who took my son from me. Can I? Please, take the box if it can be of any use to you at all. It did not help me to save Reza, but maybe it will help you find the other little boy. Mr. Shelby! I was beginning to think that there was no good to be found in this place. But I can see now that I was wrong. Goddamn insomnia. I'm totally exhausted, but I just can't sleep. I shouldn't take those damn pills again. Two forty seven AM. Always the same time. A hot drink is what I need. If I try to stay busy, it might actually help me get to sleep. shower. That'll create the magic of sleep.
There's someone here. There's someone in the apartment. The phone on the desk. I could call for help. The front door. It's the only way out. If I can reach it, I still have a chance. When the parents came home from church, all their children were gone. They searched and called for them, they cried and begged, but it was all to no avail. The children have never been seen again. I have to get out of here and find out what this ticket is about.
That letter might be linked to Sean's disappearance. I need to show it to the police. Gonna, gonna have to make it through the crowd. I can't, can't take crowds. Just can't handle it. The luggage lockers. They're on the other side of the station. I, I can't make it. Too many people. Too many people. Jason! Dad! Jason! Dad! Jason! Jason! Dad! Jason! Dad! Line 18, box number 3.
Yes, Sean. Where are you? I'm so cold. Dad. Dad. The killer is white, aged between 30 and 45. He doesn't act on impulse, but plans his crimes in a very meticulous fashion. He doesn't have anything personal against the victims. That's why he covers their faces with mud, to make them anonymous. Why does he kill them if he doesn't have anything against them? For him, they're more of an image, a symbol. That's probably why it gives him an origami figure and an orchid as gifts, to apologize for what he's done to them. Very interesting. And where does all that get us? The best way of tracking a predator is to be familiar with his behavior. That may be true in novels, but there's a child's life at stake here. Continue, Jaden. One detail attracted my attention. The interval between the time when a victim disappears and the time when the body is found ranges from three to five days. But the rainfall is always at six inches, give or take ten percent. What on earth does that mean? All the victims were drowned in rainwater. The killer kills only in the fall when there is plenty of rain. It could be that he puts them in some sort of well or tank that is open to the skies and that fills up with rainwater. The more it rains, the less time the victim has to live. Then I studied the geographical distribution of the murders. Generally, a killer commits his first murder near to where he lives, so he has a safe place to flee to if any complications arise. The more confident he becomes, the further he roams from his base. By analyzing the locations where the victims disappeared, I was able to isolate a zone where the killer might live. And, and what size is this, uh, zone? For the moment, about ten square miles. Oh, great. Must be 10,000 people live in that sort of area. You gonna question them one by one? The more clues we get, the more we can reduce the zone. We can then cross-check it with our list of suspects and identify the killer. So what's next? There are two suspects whose psychological profile might fit and can be connected to the comfort zone. I'd like to question them. Ah, damn it. We're wasting our time with this bullshit. The killer's out there somewhere, and we gotta get off our asses and find him. The killer is no ordinary murderer. He is intelligent, organized, and methodical. You won't find him by patrolling the streets. Tell me, Agent Jaden, did you get your fast experience on the job, or did you just fucking read about it in some school book? Your vast experience hasn't prevented eight victims from being murdered. Fucking asshole! That's enough. You said it took six inches of rainfall before the victim died. How much time do we have left? If the weather forecasts are right, less than 72 hours.
No answer. We waste our time coming here. Maybe we should have a little look inside anyway. There's nobody home. There is now. I'm not sure that's entirely legal. Call the cops. Looks like Nathaniel Williams is a pretty religious guy. He's a God-fearing idiot, waiting for the end of the world. We questioned him a few months back because he was causing a disturbance in the park. He was ranting and raving. Said he heard voices. Had this idea in his sick little head that I was the Antichrist. I'd come to Earth to persecute him. Real twisted. Good timing, Nathaniel. Just the man we're looking for. Angels and ministers of grace defend us. I'm Agent Norman Jaden, FBI. I'd like to ask you a few questions. As God is my witness, I haven't done anything. I'm innocent. Relax. Nobody's accusing you of anything. We just want to talk. Why all the crucifixes? Are you afraid of something? The hour is nigh, and the wrath of God shall strike men down. I am preparing for the end of the world. Where do you work, Nathaniel? You have a job? My sole occupation is praying to the all-merciful Lord for the salvation of humanity. Nathaniel, do you remember where you were last Tuesday at 4.30 p.m.? Here. I was here. I was praying. All day. Was there anybody with you? No. No, I was alone. What about the voices, Nathaniel? Do you still hear the voices? We know who talks to you, don't we, Nathaniel? Or we both know who talks to you. Don't speak that name. What does Blake, he say to you, What are you Nathaniel? doing? I can't talk about it. You mustn't talk about it. He orders That's you to enough. go and find new Leave prey, doesn't alone. he? He needs more and more. No. No. You mustn't mention him. You'll bring him here. Carter, he told you to go shit. and find that kid in the park. Your mind? The voices tormented you all night long. You wanted them to stop, didn't you, Nathaniel? Stop! Stop! That's enough! So you obeyed them to make them stop. You took that boy with you and you drowned him. Isn't that right? 
No! Stop! Stop! You killed them, didn't you, Nathaniel? Are you gonna confess, you bastard? You are the Antichrist! Put down the gun, I Nathaniel! I shall you to your father in hell! He is the son of Satan. He was sent to Earth to destroy shoot, us! For Christ's sake, shoot! Calm down, Nathaniel. Nobody here wants to hurt you. Put the gun down. Now, gently put the gun down on the floor. Team, you shall regret confronting the emissary of the Lord. You shall know divine power. Concentrate on my voice, Nathaniel. Listen only to my voice. Christ all powerful. Defend us in our battle with the forces of evil. Protect us from the cunning and wiles of the demon. May God Almighty manifest the power of his empire. And may divine power cast Satan and all the other spirits that prowl the world in search of souls into the darkest depths of hell. Enough, Nathaniel! Put the gun down! Immediately! Back away. Slowly. Drop the gun. Drop it, Nathaniel. Put your hands on your head. Turn around. I... I shot him. Yep. Looks like you did. It was only a crucifix. <laughs> Can't say I'll miss him. <laughs> Come on, let's go.